A new report has found that drug shortages are a new normal in the UK and warns that the situation is being made worse by Brexit. Research by the think tank Nuffield Trust shows medicine shortages more than doubled between 2020 and 2023. These include antibiotics and drugs for ADHD, epilepsy and type 2 diabetes. Pharmacy bosses say patients' lives are at risk and the government's being urged to carry out a review of the supply chain. Joining me now is pharmacist Sachin Govind. Thank you so much for joining me. So tell me what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis going about your business as a pharmacist when shortages have become the new normal. Uh, hi, Vanessa. Thanks for having me. Yes, um, life in a pharmacy is very difficult at the minute with these drug shortages. Um, I'm increasingly seeing um, lots of medications going in and out of stock very quickly, and I think it's very frustrating, and it's across across a wide range of medic medications. It's not limited to, say, one area. Um, and I've definitely noticed in the last sort of even the last six months, especially incredibly difficult with, um, like I said, more of these more and more of these drugs going out of stock. We're owing patients more and more items. And yeah, it's increasingly difficult when patients are asking us about medications, when they're going to come into stock. Do we know when they're going to be? How long am I going to have to wait? And I basically can't give uh, a definitive answer. Um, so it's very frustrating for me very frustrating for patients because obviously they need this medication it's in some cases um essential life-saving treatment and when they can't get hold of it obviously affects um potentially the, the health condition they're dealing with and obviously it causes them to causes them a lot of a lot of pain a lot of hassle and um, they have to go back to doctors potentially or keep popping into the pharmacy um and in some cases actually missing doses because we can't get the medication in stock in time um for them to use so, so in practice, you know, when you're prescribed antibiotic, it's because the doctor fears that without them you'll get sicker and, you know, maybe have to be hospitalised and, you know, you need them to fight the infection. It's important. And if you can't yeah. get them, what in practice happens? You can't just say to the patient, sorry, we haven't got any, by. They have to get them from somewhere, don't they? So do you begin a process of phoning around the country to try to get them or, or what happens in, in reality? So, so typically what we try and do is um, we obviously have a range of suppliers that we'll use and we have various software that enables us to see if that, um, if, if either of those um, manufacturers or companies can supply those medications. Um, the second option we present to patients is um, can they visit another pharmacy? Sometimes you might have an odd box in a different pharmacy that may be, um, that may be available. Um, so we encourage patients to... Um, potentially go go visit a different pharmacy in the area if they obviously are able to drive to, to get there and see if they can um, obtain it from there. Or the third option, um, which is increasingly becoming more common, is I have to refer them back to the doctor or the prescriber and uh, they then communicate. And in some cases, the doctors will liaise with us in terms of what we have in stock and what we can supply. Um, in some cases, it can just be a straight swap in terms of if we've got, say, um, a medication at 100 milligram and a medication at half the strength, they can potentially double up. But in some cases, it does mean that they switch to a drug in, a diff in, in the same class of drugs. Or in some cases, it means they completely switch to a drug that's in a different class of medication to help them treat them or treat that issue. Um, and that is the same with antibiotics and um, with other medications in uh, and, different classes. And is it, Sachin, is it a, a, um, a supply chain issue? And if it is, can it be solved or cleared up or made more efficient? Or is it something that's likely to get worse? So I think there's a multitude of issues. Um, and I, if I'm being honest, I don't see the situation improving um, quickly or anytime soon. I think there's a combination of, uh, I've actually seen a number of, drug suppliers or companies not uh, not operating anymore or in the recent recently anyway they've gone out of business or they're not operating or they're operating with a sort of a limited supply um i think brexit hasn't helped um it's now more lucrative for drug companies to sell medications into europe in america where they're making uh, more money support more money and um also the legislation is um a lot easier to sort of supply, supply drugs um in the uk we have a very strict um governance process we have the M mhra who helps with our governance and making sure that medicines are safe and are, are suitable in this country which again is is needed we need that safety because our medications aren't sweet um you know that they, they can do good and bad to the body if used in the right or wrong way and um, but other countries in europe and of uh europe especially um it is a lot easier to get those drugs to market um, and then obviously the cost of materials have gone up. Obviously, we've seen massive inflation sort of the last 
was pretty much since COVID. So obviously the cost of drugs has gone up. The cost of procuring ingredients for those drugs has gone up. So that makes life very difficult because um, obviously the cost of ingredients goes up, means the cost of drugs goes up. And in some cases, it's just not financially viable then to produce the, produce the drugs um, by the companies. And as such, um, it's not reaching the shelves for our patients. All right, I'm going to leave it there. But thank you so much for keeping us up to date and abreast of what's going on. Thank you very much indeed.